Aussie Prop Girl here. Today we're making the scarecrow from the opening scene of Sleepy Hollow. We've gathered some sticks and laid them out on the lawn, trying to get the shape of the scarecrow from the start of the movie. And the pumpkin head we got from Bunnings, it lights up. And here's Chris just putting the basic frame together. So we're keeping it pretty simple, just one main stick for the body and then T-section for the shoulders. And then we're gonna add some arms onto either end and they're gonna form like a, a basic triangle shape. So what Chris is doing here is pre-drilling some holes through the sticks before he screws them together so they don't split and cutting off any extra bits that we don't want. You can see now the triangle shape that I was talking about that we're trying to create for the body. And this is our first look. We put it up against the wall to check how it's going. Obviously there's a few bits we need to cut off from it, but quite happy with how it's looking. I think we decide to change one of the hands Here we are cutting that, that um, top part off because we realised we found a better branch that would make a more spookier looking hand. And as usual, we've got our helpers helping out. And what's a spooky scarecrow without some ribs? So we're just using some scrap pieces of wood and drilling them onto the front to act as ribs for the scarecrow. And I think it'll look really good once we put the fabric on to be able to drape them around the rib cage. Now for the head of the scarecrow. I felt like it needed spooking up a little to have that dark, eerie, sleepy, hollow, Tim Burton kind of grungy look. You know what I'm talking about. So I just used basic black acrylic paint and went around the eyes, nose and mouth on the inside of the pumpkin. And then I just added some lines to the corners to make it look a little bit more rotted and a bit more round. So the next thing to do is just dry brush on some brown and black paint to make it look a bit more dirty. So just using a dry brush with a little bit of paint, wiping off the excess. And then I just followed the lines that were already on the pumpkin, the vertical lines there, and went down dirtying the pumpkin up. And I did this all over the whole entire head. Once I finished this process, I wanted the acrylic paint to survive the outdoors because this was going out in our front yard. So I covered the whole thing in Mod Podge once I finished, um, just to give it a bit more durability outside. If you're enjoying this video, guys, please give it a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. And here's the finished product, much more spooky. Just using a hot glue gun here and some twine to just cover up the screws on the ribs. So to give the illusion that the ribs are held on with the twine tied together how a spooky scarecrow should be. And now we move on to dressing the scarecrow. We've just draped over some weed matting that we got from the hardware store. And we drape two pieces over each shoulder and cutting holes, making it look rag, raggedy and tucking it behind the ribs so they still stand out. And I'm using a mixture of a hot glue and staples to hold the weed matting in place 
when we were testing this out, it was actually quite windy. So it highlighted the areas that needed to be pegged down. So it lasts a few weeks out in the elements. So attaching the head was probably our biggest challenge we had with building this scarecrow. We used a flat square of wood and drilled that directly onto the body of the scarecrow. And then we used that as a base to attach the head. The pumpkin already had a built-in light, but we weren't going to be able to access the controls once we screwed it on to the body. So we removed the light and screwed it on. And then later on, we just added in a light through the mouth opening. So it's still lit up at night. We also took some time adjusting the angle of the head because we wanted to make sure you could see the face of the pumpkin from the ground when the scarecrow was up in the air. It was actually quite tall, this pumpkin. So we needed the face to be slightly angled downwards. Once it was standing up with its head on, we realized it needed a bit more fabric. So I just adding another piece behind the lower rib here. And then I cut some holes in that. And we also added creepy cloth, spooky cloth um, to the arms to make it a bit more eerie. We also added some around the neck, trying to hide the neck join where we screwed on the pumpkin. And here it is all finished. So happy with how this turned out. And we couldn't wait to put it right into the front yard. The scarecrow really set the tone for our haunt. And I'm so happy how it turned out. If you want to see a walkthrough of all the props, that video is coming soon. So hit that subscribe button.